Are you ready to get fired up about Power Up Radio with Dr. Pat? This new show is unleashed unshaken, unstoppable, as Dr. Pat brings mind-blowing news conversations with top world thought leaders unleashed like never heard before. Conversations covering leading edge and headline-worthy topics from pop culture to presidents, sex to spirituality, surviving to thriving. Dr. Pat is powered up and you don't want to miss it. Think authentic and spontaneous, fun no matter what. Power Up Radio starts now. Hey, everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome to the show. We have got a special edition for all of you out there with my friend and colleague, the one and only Chef Rossi, writer, radio personality, screenwriter, amazing chef. I'm still working, waiting for my blackout cake for my birthday, but who knows? And we are here just to chat with everybody on a couple of things. Of course we are. Now. Here's where I want to start with this, Chef. The show is called about intuition for the craziest things. Right. I've had, I've had the craziest things in my life. But I had a really crazy thing happen this week. So I'm on the show with the dream guy. Wednesday. Mr. Expert on dreams. And he's going over dreams. And I say to him, does it does it count if you like have a dream? I said, you know, like my friend, Chef Rossi, we have these ideas and they like pop up and they're like a visual thing. I said, I got this visual thing that popped up and it said November, it said 11-4-111 AWM. And I said, it was really clear to me that that was going to be a special announcement about the election. And he he kind of looked at me like he said, that's today. He said at one eleven. I said, yeah. I said, I don't know what it's about. I'm not saying it's going to be this or it's going to be that. Do those things count? So the reason I bring up this intuition is we all have it. I make a lot of decisions with intuition. What are your, what's your take on that? Because look, you've accomplished a lot of stuff. You know, you are a restaurateur. You work with people, you do weddings, you do bar mitzvahs, you're an author, you're a speaker. I'm still trying to be an author. Maybe you'll help me. Raging skillet, there you go. How big of a role does intuition play in how you live your life? Well, I just have to say one thing right off. I, I know, I'm, I now really do understand that you are a much better person than I am. Because <laughs> you had that dream. And right away, you thought you thought about the election and bettering the world and bettering the country. I would have just one kind of ran right over to the deli and thought, I need to buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> That's where I would have gone. That's where my intuition would have gone. I, I try to pay attention to my intuition all the time. And I have to say, when I've made terrible mistakes, it usually was when I didn't listen. Yeah. Either I didn't listen to my intuition or I made a decision based on fear. And fear is a tricky thing because I try to never make a decision because I'm afraid of something, but very often I've made decisions to prove I'm not afraid of it or I oh. do it anyway. And then it's still a bad decision. So intuition is a powerful tool, but sometimes I forget it's there. It's like an old friend you take for granted. And then I'm like, oh my God, why didn't I listen to my intuition all the time? You know, it's like grandmama used to say, I just know, I just know. Well, the, the lead into this was that I made an announcement. I was not going to watch the election results. I wasn't going to do it. I just knew not to do it. And my friends were like texting me. And one of my friends texted me on Tuesday night. And it was the weirdest text. And, and, and I just knew I didn't, I didn't want to do it. I knew There was nothing that I was going to gain from sitting in front of a TV and watching an election. And my friends said, you don't enjoy enjoy anxiety. Well, I just knew. Well, here's what I knew. I knew intuitively it was going to be closer than anybody said. Right. I knew that we would not know. I knew that something else. I knew that this would be an unfolding because of the energetic nature. I mean, even today, a Fox News group getting out of a van 
in Arizona, a Fox News group getting out of a van in Arizona was pegged, not as what it was, as people with ballots. So it started a conspiracy theory in Arizona, and now they're protesting on something that didn't happen. The good news is that people caught the, the reality of that. But see, this has got to play out energetically and intuitively it's got to play out and it's going to play out in the way it's meant to play out so for me i knew this thing i literally knew don't do it and it's not that i'm not plugged in it's not that i'm not supportive of course in my state i did i did look to see what did we vote on am i going to get more taxes you know uh you case, sir. like tune in for like a half hour and then immediately watch a rerun of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. You know, you, something like that. I watch uh, Spider-Man. Even better. Yeah, yeah. I, I, You know what, I tuned in and sort of tormented myself and then I watched This Is Us, which is like, I'm kind of hooked on that show even though it's a little savvy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Lydia, Lydia's Chaser is watching reruns of Sex and the City. You know, I'll watch any superhero movie. You know, you just you have to have a reward. So you torture yourself with a half hour of it and then you have to have your reward. And, you know, it's interesting because I got a lot of like emails and texts and people. And and so here's the deal. We have a clip we're going to play because I made this announcement at 10 o'clock about what was going to happen at 111. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling the dream guy. And, and, and so 111, 109 comes, Pacific. 109, 409, where you are comes. And my friend sends me a screenshot and says, D are you watching like the station, whatever you watch, Fox, CNN, are you watching? I said, no, like, dude, I'm working. And she says, you've got to watch this. There's a, black, there's a stage, there are no people on it, but they're saying that, Biden is going to be walking out there. And she says, it's 109. It's not 111, it's 109. I said, okay, let me know if something happens at 111. So 109, 110. Do we have that clip, TJ? Right at 111. He's going to play the clip. You got okay. that clip? It's clear that we're winning enough states to reach 270 electoral votes needed to win the presidency. I'm not here to declare that we've won, but I am here to report when the count is finished, we believe we will be the winners. 111. All the Perfect. Thanks, TJ. 111. So, <laughs> oh my God. You know, look, now, I mean, right, TJ? So, I am not a psychic. I'm not. I mean, sometimes we get insight, right? Right. We have to get the energetic insight and the intuition to move to a state where we can absolutely honor each other as human beings now. We need, we, we well, your do transformation this. talk radio, this country needs a major transformation. That word has been on my mind nonstop. I yeah. don't like what's happening right now. We're very clearly, we can see that Biden is ahead. And this is this is how the election goes and it's close and there's still mail-in votes coming in because of Corona and you just wait and wait and be patient. You know, I know we're all in, just be patient. But the guy in the White House is calling it like a hoax and he's getting people who are not clued in, who just believe everything he says to think there's some giant conspiracy theory. So anywhere where he's ahead, there's nothing wrong with the voting there. And anywhere where he's behind, oh, there's something wrong with the voting there. And what I'm afraid is that there's just going to be enormous amounts of civil war kind of energy happening and violence. It's not good. It's not American. It's not kind. I mean, I can't imagine how many people will be hurt by that kind of action. You just have to be calm and just say, let every vote be counted and let the people say what they wanted. And very clearly. The people at this point have said Biden, but I'm not celebrating yet. I'm waiting till the last vote is counted. We've been here before. Yeah, we've done we've that. We've been here before. And we were here with Al Gore. We, we've been here before. And, and look, 
it's an interesting time. Here's what I know about this intuitively. Given everything that has gone on prior to this election, and I have a friend that works, let's just say in the system, everything that's gone on, here's what I'm hearing from the voting places. They have more checks, double checks, triple checks, quadruple checks. They have put more safeguards in place because they're ready. Right. Now, we already know there's going to be two runoffs that are going to happen in January. So there's going to be a lot that's not known. We already know there are two of them in the Senate races. But I'd like to stir things up a little bit because there are things I don't understand. And you got to help me with something. I know that you can help me with this. Okay. So I call over to Bernie. I call... I call over to Angus King, Bernie and Angus. And I'm like, and Bernie's got a whole bunch of posting. So thank you, Bernie, for raising the level of consciousness for all of us. Amen, brother, for you. And I said to Bernie, look, and Angus, I said, look, I know. I know you knew this was your time. I know it. I know you knew it was your time before, but I'm going to give you one more idea to make it your time. So out of my mouth comes this, and I cannot stop the text messages from coming in from people about this thing I said, but I'm willing to say it to you, Chef, because you will straighten my butt out faster than you could shake a stick if you think I'm wrong. Yeah, but I'm a little bit afraid of you because when you get fired up, I got to step back a little bit. Okay, I'm I'm just, I'm not going to get fired up. Okay. But I use common sense. It was like the time I was in Hawaii doing a radio show and I had this brilliant idea because <laughs> the show is on pollution. So I'm on Hawaiian radio and I said, oh, I got a great idea. Why don't we take everything and throw it in the volcano? Oh my gosh, oh, boy, I, I'm still like, paying for that. I didn't like that. Well, go ahead, lay it on me. Bernie, independent. Angus yeah. King, independent. And I said, you guys can make history right now. And I said to Bernie, kind of nice. I said, like, didn't you run like in the Democratic, like for the presidency as a Democrat? Because I I don't know. I don't know how Bernie got in there as a Democrat. He's an independent. But I thought he was part of the whole Democratic. Yeah. And I said, it's your time to switch now. It's your time to become a real Democrat. And I said, if you and Angus really step in as Democrats. What do you think will happen to the Senate, Bernie? That it gets to be a little more liberal? No. We take control of the Senate. Oh. I know. I even thought of that. I know. Because it was like another little 11-4 thing that popped up for me. I thought of that. So I tweeted, like, You know, I don't know how to, I don't know what to do. I'm not really, I'm not social media savvy. Could they do that? I don't know. I don't know if they could do it or not. Backlash when you tweeted? Uh, I I got some tweets that just like that other tweet that I sent you. But I think it's a great idea. I mean, it's not as obnoxious as my ignorance about throwing plastic into the big volcano on the big right. item madam pelly i'm telling you i just it's like better it's better than sexy blonde women sacrifices right that's a little bit of oh influence. no wait wait i have to think about that every king kong movie we've ever seen no sexy blonde sacrifices was the bachelor bachelorette last night ah okay oh please don't email me on that i thought it was very lovely i i really liked it hey uh, pat dr pat i have to tell you i have a special guest in my kitchen today that can I you tell her. me are we can I, we show that her before before we part company to talk to you about is it hillary no (laughs) no but close enough who is it it is my my fabulous my fabulous friend and office manager celeste who also is a very talented baker and very recently she perfected guess what no yes for my upcoming birthday (laughs) hey Hey. Hey, 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 I said, oh, no, you have to meet Dr. Pat. She's been asking me about Brooklyn Blackout, Kate, for, for like two years now. But Entenmann's made it. What's I that? Mean, Entenmann's made the Blackout, Kate. Not like it. They did, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tell, tell Dr. When's Pat. your birthday? December 11th. Oh. 
Oh, wow. wow. December 11th. I wonder is that during Hanukkah? It might be. And yeah, I think it always is. Oh, you know how the blackout cake came to be? I don't. I just, I know the, a little bit about it and I know it's really hard to make. All I so knew, tell me, tell me. Well, my 13 year old stepdaughter is obsessed and she's very proud uh, Brooklyner. Um, and, uh, every time there's any reason to celebrate or not, she has asked, can we go to Lady Bird Bakery or Union Market and right. get a blackout cake? Um, and they're amazing, but they're also like, one of them is $26, you know, that size. Um, so Halloween was coming and trick or treating, we weren't so sure of. So I was like, okay, what will t- keep Adele entertained? A blackout cake is kind of spooky if you think about it. And I looked it up. It started in Brooklyn in 1942. Yeah. Uh, the Navy yards had to be blacked out every night because of the war. And yep. a baker called Ebinger, in recognition of that, started this cake. And it took off in the Midwest even more than it did here. And sometimes they call it dirt cake, but we know the truth. It's Brooklyn black. We know the truth. Yeah. You got to ask Linda about this. I, uh, TJ, you got to get Linda to come on. Linda, okay. So, Anytime I got a surgery, come here for a minute. Come here for a minute. You can call in. Call in. We're talking about blackout cake. Oh, is this a caller? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, let's. Who's the caller? We're trying to lighten it up in here a little bit. I got some. I don't know. I got a caller. Charlene from Canada. We got a Canadian. Charlene from Canada. So let me tell you the story. So every time, so the only time I could get it was weird around my birthday or a surgery. Like if I had a knee surgery, we would go look for the blackout cake because that's all I would eat. So Linda and I, we would go look and, and it was Entenmann's at the time. Yeah. Right? And you'd go to look and you'd have to dig like Entenmann's had like the shelf and they buried the cake in somewhere. I don't know where they bury it. And Linda, you got to know Linda. Where's Linda? Triple Virgo. I, I want Linda to get on Zoom. Virgo. TJ, make Linda get Another on Zoom. Virgo. Virgo. Another Virgo. Virgo. Triple Virgo. Somehow I would look, my quadruple Sagittarian, and I would look and I couldn't see it. Linda is like moving the the apple strudel and then, you know, and there is the blackout cake. And I would sit down and I could devour an entire blackout cake. Oh my God, a whole cake? Yeah, we're going to take a caller. Yeah. All right, let's bring Charlene on. Stay with us. Stay with us. Okay. Let's bring Charlene on. Charlene, are you on? Hello? Hey, Charlene, welcome to the show. Hello? I don't know. TJ, can she hear us? Uh, she can hear us. Hey, Charlene. I'm not hearing anything on her end. All right, let's go to a quick break to make sure we can get this straight now, because I want to talk to Charlene from Canada. We, I love our Canadian listeners. We have more Canadian listeners and hosts, by the way, hosting their own show. But don't go away. I want to talk about the blackout cake. Let's take a short break. Take us to a break. So we're going to go for the hour. Take us to a break. And let's see if we can uh, chat with Charlene. I love Charlene. Go ahead, TJ. Welcome back, everybody. Special hour of power up with Dr. Pat. We're we're just kicking it up with Chef Rossi. Uh, TJ, I don't know if you can download that picture, but if you can, I would love for you to throw that over on Facebook for us, please. Um, Charlene, are you with us? Hello, Charlene, my old friend. friend. I come to welcome you. Again. Are you serious? You did that song right there. Yes. Did you sing that song right there? Yes. That's a sound of silence. Sound of silence. Yes. You, you're not old enough to know that song. What Seriously? What are you doing? I know that I'm, I look like I'm in my late 20s, early 30s, but I'm slightly older than that. Look, Celeste is like laughing. She's, She's laughing. like, I'm hey, pulling my. Like, <laughs> so, so Celeste is like what, 18? Are you like 18? Huh? Like are you like 18? <laughs> like 18. Celeste like is an actor and she's also an audio voice star 
and she's she's done all kinds of books on tape. I should got it. Have show. you done that? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to work with me on mine, my yeah. book? They <laughs> yeah. want me to write. TJ, where's Charlene? Come on, Charlene. Come to me. Somebody to find Charlene. Yeah, we had Charlene, listening. but she's no longer here. I'm sure. Oh. oh, come on, Charlene. I love you. 1-800-930-2819. Okay, so blackout cake. Uh, can I share my screen or are you going to do it? Um, I, aren't we sharing? No. Is uh, TJ, are you going to show the blackout cake or should I do it? I, he's, this is his first. This is his first live show. Ah, wow. exciting! <laughs> the like, cake is there. Quite an adventure making this cake, and she she will tell oh, you. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, okay. Question: May I? Yes. I'm analyzing the cake now. Okay. Okay. All right. Hang hang with me a minute. Hang with me. Perfect. Okay, because I I got the cake up. Oh my God! Look at that. All right. So here's the difference. Great. So you got to help me with this, okay? Because I have a request, and and so I have a theory about this. My theory is when the real blackout cake, it looked like that. When Entenmann's did it, wait for me, wait for it. It was dark chocolate. It was a dark chocolate pudding. Yes. You must perfect dark chocolate blackout cake just for me for my birthday. I'm telling you, have you gotten the Entenmann's cake? It was, I don't know how they did it, but the whole thing was covered with that fuzzy stuff that you got on it. Yeah. The whole thing, and it was dark chocolate and dark chocolate pudding. I agree wholeheartedly. And in Do fact, you? Yeah. It, it called for semi-sweet chocolate and, uh, and unsweetened chocolate, but I was like, it shouldn't it be dark chocolate or that you know special right, dark right. chocolate? And that would make it a little less sweet, too. Um, it was delicious. Has, yeah, is, Charlene, are you with us? Oh my God, send that picture to us. Yeah. Charlene. Charlene, are you here? Oh, Charlene, are you here? Charlene. <clears throat> Pardon me? Hi, hey, welcome. Technology. Charlene, I could hear you for a second. Charlene, right, Charlene, are you still we'll there? We'll wait for you. We'll wait for you. Look, when you're live, just say hi. Just jump in. Well, no matter where we are, just jump yeah. in, Charlene. Yeah. Whatever yeah. TJ and David and Jessica got to figure out with this, let them do it. Okay. Now, Dr. Let's... Pat, there's only one problem, which is that Celeste oh, no. is here in New York and you're in Seattle. So how is she going to get you that cake? I don't think it would travel well. I got a feeling it would not, it would not do well on FedEx or UPS. You want to just come by and pick it up? I can't come on the 11th because guess who's getting her knee replaced? You? Why so not? You really need cake. You need. Yeah, you I need, need the cake. cake. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how to do it. That's what you're so, doing on your birthday. We getting... could pay somebody to fly, but then oh my God, nobody wants to fly. So no. that that would be an issue. I'm going to work on this because okay. I think there's a way to do it. But we would have to improvise. Okay, do you want to hear my bizarre idea? And so I am not a chef and I'm not a restaurateur. But I watch Cake Wars. Uh huh, of course. Do you know the show Cake Wars? Yeah. Okay, so I saw one of the Cake War people take a cake. And what they did to keep it stable was they, they, had, the, they had these like uh, a circle. And they had almost like these plexiglass, I don't know, a pole coming out of them, right? Right. And they got the cake and they were like, uh. And so they made the cake on these poles, right? So it, it had its own container. Right. So I watched them do this and then they put the first layer of the cake and they got, the, it was really weird. Then they had these like plexiglass things shooting up out of the cake. And then they would put the, 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 the frosting on it. Then they put the next layer. Then they put the frosting. Then they did the whole thing. Right. And then they took a, gla a plexiglass cover and put it on the cake. Now, of course, when you ship that puppy, you ship it fragile. Right. To be honest with you, here's my thought. If that cake came through inside a plexiglass and it was all smushed, I don't care. 
I, I don't care. What you're talking about, those little poles and things like that, those are always like the, my worst nightmare because we cater all of these weddings. And when I first started catering, I didn't really understand. At the end of the night, the bride and the groom, they had the big three-tiered, sometimes four- and five-tiered wedding cake. The bride and the groom, they cut their first slice. Then they want to save the top in their freezer to eat one year later. I don't know why they want to have one-year-old frozen cake one year later, but it's a thing. Yeah, why do and people do that? it goes into the kitchen, and the chefs in the kitchen cut the cake. So when I first started catering, I'm like, what's the big deal? In comes the cake. We take the top off. There's a whole art to it where you have to kind of cut around in a circle, and, you know, you have to make sure you have enough. And just when you get your system going, you hit one of these poles that's – balancing the whole cake from falling over i turned i turned my first five or six cakes into cake chop suey for sure <laughs> before i got the hang of it and those those poles i'm like oh no another pole that's what's holding up the thing but they're a pain in the tushy when you try to cut it definitely yeah yeah and, and you know let, let's look okay so here's the thing you are a chef mm -hmm. don't you cook intuitively sometimes mm -hmm. oh yeah it's right. like I don't, I can't really, I, if I get a recipe, this is the reason why I am not making the cake in Celeste's, because if I get a recipe, then I only just want to look at it briefly and go off on my own. I don't want to have one plus one equals two. And with baking, you have to behave yourself, because if you put you really do. flour instead of five, you know, it's going to be the caca. So I like to just kind of play and in tune and feel it out. We had like an adventure in the kitchen the last couple of days. I was, Gloria, my sous chef, and I have been triple cooking. Virgo. Triple Virgo. Another triple Virgo. She texted while we were on this thing. Triple Virgo. Gloria, G-L-O-R-I-A. Anyway, um, she's going to love that. So we've been cooking up a storm, and I was doing this rice salad which was a wild rice salad, and usually I cook it stovetop, but I, I thought, why don't we do it in the oven? It can be done. And so we did it in the oven, and I was kind of just thinking and pontificating and whatever and salting at the same time and not paying attention. And I put too much salt, which I never do. I never over-salt because it's better to under-salt than add later. So the rice came out super salty for everyone except for Gloria, who likes a lot of seasoning. And so I knew I wanted to mix it with jasmine rice, and we had this whole two-day-long process to save the rice. And in the end, it came out gorgeous, but we still had all of this wild rice left over. And I said, I just have a feeling that I could just wash it. And everyone was like, you can't wash rice. I mean, that's insane. But wild rice isn't really rice. It's like a grass. So the end result of it was Celeste washed the rice, and it's fantastic. So now we all learn something in the kitchen. I don't know what that had to do about anything. Oh, my intuition told me I could wash the rice, even though. Well, you know. well it's interesting. And the reason that I'm bringing it up is because I, I was watching or listening somebody. Uh, you know, you get all these emails and then you get all these texts, right? And somebody made a statement about the election. And it was not your typical political whatever you're going to say. It right. was a statement because they were baffled. Right. Right? They were like, well, wait a minute. Did these people have a strategy? Did this one have a strategy? And this one have a strategy? And then the woman, the campaign person for Biden, I'm not sure who's running Donald Trump's campaign, but the whoever this woman is started to talk like there was a hunch. Like, you had a hunch about what? Arizona, Nevada. And I'm like, and, you know, there, of course there were facts and there was polls. Right, but sometimes it just happened. But there were no polls right. to say the strategy we're going to use is this. And I thought about our buddy, Hillary. And I thought, dude, you should have called Gene Houston and gotten a few hunches, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think about the difference I'm not an expert. I'm not a pundit. Pundit, pundit. What am I? I'm, I'm neither one of those. You're I'm right. not they fondant for sure. Like, like, what's that fondant they put on the cakes? I'm not <laughs> that. Is that fondant? What do you say? Not You're not fondant. I'm not that one. But it gets you to start to think, right? 
Right. And I'm thinking about it, and I went back four years. That was painful, but I did step back. Celeste, were you voting age then? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. And, 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 and so you go back and you think there was such precision. I remember precision with the Clinton campaign, right? Right. right. Do it's you so remember that level of precision? I also remembered it with Bernie. Right. I remember the precision. Right. But then I also remembered, you know, President Trump. Donald Trump, who I grew up with in New York, I, we know him very well, right. met him, oh, met him. I was part of his university, too, just admitting that right here. Never got the refund. Never got but, the refund? Never got the refund. But I could tell you, I could show my, you my little certificate. I know Celeste is like, did you admit that on air, Pat? I was just thinking that. <laughs> That's but, okay. But what I want to say about it was the campaign that he ran, I believe, was highly intuitive. Now, do I like everything he said? No. No. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about what happens when we follow that gut feeling. You know, I'm in, like you're in New York, right? You walk down Manhattan for a minute, right? Because you're in Manhattan, aren't you? Are you in Manhattan? Okay. Yeah, we are. So, you, so you, you walk down the street in Manhattan, and I shared the story of Stonewall, which you never heard. So I, sh I shared the story of how did we end up at Stonewall on the night of Stonewall that summer? How did we end up there? And it was really interesting when I think about that because we're running around the village. It's really late at night. You know, you go from bar to bar like I did when I was younger. I don't do that anymore. But you go from bar to bar and you got to hit this little section. And somehow at one o'clock in the morning, you're like, ah, oh, let's go over there. What you don't do, I don't care what time at night it is you don't walk down a dark alley right in Manhattan. a lot of that a you lot of do that question especially when new york used to be dangerous what kept you alive and not being hurt was intuition yeah. i mean this common common sense and intuition are two different things so common sense tells you don't go out on a dark alley alone with like a pocket full of cash you know like that's common sense intuition is like you're walking down the street and a sort of normal looking person is walking by you, but something tells you to get away from them. And that's intuition. I get that all the time. I mean, obviously, if there's a crazy homeless person waving his arms around and yelling, I'm going to get away from him. That's that was me at 17. That was you yesterday. That was totally me at 17, <laughs> homeless in New York, waving wow. my arms around, trying to get something to eat. Uh, <laughs> that was, that's really a true story, by the way. That's true. Uh, but you know what's fascinating to me is anger anger clouds intuition True. fear clouds intuition True. and the reason I'm talking about it today is Linda caught me this morning in my little sanctuary room where I also get dressed and I have this little green chair that the seat is all worn out in it and I actually have a piece of cardboard in the seat with a little pillow because I can't let go of it. And I sit in that chair and I sit there for about three minutes. So she caught me this morning like this and she's drying her hair like 20 feet away, but she's from Jersey. So she's got to yell at five in the morning. She's got to yell. And she says, what are you doing? She says, you sit there. I saw you sit there. She says, you're, what are you doing over there meditating? I said, that's what I'm doing, meditating. But the reason I'm sharing this is because I'm not meditating to achieve a million dollars. I'm not meditating. But there's a moment of quiet that each of, of, of us get. We can get a moment of quiet and a moment of peace. And we could remember one thing, gratitude and fear cannot coexist. Gratitude and anger cannot coexist. Gratitude and resentment cannot coexist. Gratitude and envy cannot coexist. Gratitude and hate cannot coexist. It can't. So she caught me today doing my in my brain mantra of thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. 70 times a day, and I do this for 70 days before the holidays. That's my mantra. And it doesn't matter what the election results are because if you see, like that. this is what we have to do. 
chef and chef. I like that. This is what we have to do. So when you make that blackout cake for me in dark chocolate, and you're getting ready to think about how to send it, you're being like, thank you, thank you, God, thank you, goddess, thank you, universe, thank you, thank you. But, uh, you could always just go to Seattle. I would, normally, I would gladly go. Yeah, I would love for you to go. You could actually make it here. Yeah. But today, we have to capture the essence of who we are and where we are. I made a decision, Chef, and I think you did too, Chefs. I was not going to hold the energy I had in the last election. I can't. I was going to accept whatever the laws of the universe, and still do, provide. Because neither one of these people running, they are not my source. They're not my source. I definitely couldn't go through a, what I went through the last time. The Tuesday night, I, it started, I mean, I was cautiously optimistic. You, I didn't really listen to the polls, even though they had Joe Biden ahead, clearly, but I just didn't, I, the polls also said that last time, so I was just cautiously optimistic, but I started feeling, you know, worried and concerned. It started getting later, and I just looked at my girlfriend. I'm like, let's just turn it off. And he was he was ahead, but not as far ahead, ahead as we thought he would be, and just turned the TV off, and I had a little trouble sleeping, I made some calming chamomile tea, you know, with a little bit of bourbon in it. And <laughs> <laughs> then suddenly I did feel sleepy. Imagine that. Anyway, so I started to fall asleep, and I couldn't quite fall asleep. And I, I thought, well, I guess I should pray, but I'm not really a praying type of person. So I just let myself disappear in, in a kind of a meditation for a little while. And I, I found my mother. Just as I remembered her, big fat Yiddish mama, I found her. And I asked her to help. And she got a big giant blanket, like a baby blanket. And she wrapped Joe Biden up in the blanket. And I was so happy she did that. But then I was like, what about me? I want, the, I want some blanket too. And I was feeling a little cold that night. So I kept trying to get in on the blanket, you know, to warm up. And in fact, I think I was pulling the blanket off my girlfriend while I was dreaming it. <laughs> but she did. She wrapped Joe up in this big blanket. So I don't know. I've had the image in my head ever since. And every time I start feeling a little stressed out. Now, I don't believe that that was a dream or a coincidence. I really do believe that I probably connected with my mother and she knew I needed some loving. And, um, and I'm hoping she did throw that blanket over Joe because he needed it too. But what we really need is we need that big, giant, warm blanket over the whole country. Because even though I have so much trouble understanding how half the country can be wanting to be white supremacists and wanting to take away a woman's right to choose and wanting gay people not to have rights, I mean, I have trouble understanding any of that. It makes me wonder if this was how it felt during the Civil War. But we need to get past that and just be a people again and not be... Yeah all the infighting and hating because then we're just going to destroy ourselves. We can't be a superpower if we're one big mound of infighting, you know? There's something interesting I want to ask you about, and this is, and uh, there's a perception about who people are. Mm -hmm. Now, I grew up in a family, dad Republican, mama Doris, Democrat, Although she, you know, she was very clear. If Marilyn Monroe could be president, that's who she'd vote for. Just loved her. She's all about the love. Um, she is rolling over in the grave now because my, my stepmom, and, and let me tell you, these people are from the South. My family, this side, they are Southerners. So when people start to, to stereotype people from the South or the Midwest or here and there, it just yeah. makes me crazy. Yeah. But when I hear on the news, like I did today, Steve Bannon talking about beheading, I'm like, WT, I'm like, what are we doing? But then the good news, I, I have this as good news. Apparently, Nevada is the first i thought washington state was so i'm going to go over to jay Inslee. i'm going to ask him what's up dude nevada i heard 
was the first state to make gay marriage constitutional. Did you guys hear that? No. I got I to gotta do a fact check on that for myself. Oh, now I want to check that yeah. out, too. Yeah, we could do a Zoom on that, or not a Zoom. A, 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 a Celeste, you can look it up. I'm working on it. Yeah, but that's what I heard. I mean, in the midst of all of this other crazy noise, we're going to blow by the fact that that state, Nevada, that I read that. But then I'm shocked because this is how little I pay attention to stuff like this. I thought Washington was one it's of the first. They've done that, right? Yeah. I thought it already was constitutional. But I, I, I thought too. But then there's this other thing of that, and I'm saying, Chef, we got to get more up to date. We really do. If we're gonna do shows like this, we yeah. better understand what's a right, what's constitutional, what, right? Because I'm sitting here thinking in Washington. And then we get that Nevada thing saying, uh, let me just see if I can look it up. Maybe, maybe to She's lo looked it up. Does, uh, according to this, it says Massachusetts in 2004 became the first U.S. state and the sixth jurisdiction in the world to legalize same-sex marriage following the Supreme Judicial right. Court's decision. No, here so it is. Here it is. I'm going to give you. Here you go. That's true. But it didn't change the Constitution. No. Here it, it is. Not. There it is. I could do a screenshot. I don't know if I don't know if uh, TJ could get this up in time. Nevada, here it is. Nevada, Nevada, whatever you say. This is 23 hours ago or something. Nevada, Nevada becomes the first state to recognize gay marriage in state constitution. Wow. And what is everybody else doing? Yeah. What? What? Wow. I'm like, wait a minute. So it's one thing Help to me grant here. the rights, it's another thing to change the state constitution. Just like we have the rights federally, but we haven't made an amendment to the constitution. You need to send this to Governor Cuomo and say, buddy, stop being asleep at the switch here. I don't even know how that happens. I don't know if it happens in the government. But, you know, part of this, too, is there's a picture of two men hugging. It's, you know, we have got to remember the dignity of the human spirit. Right, absolutely. Biden, Trump, Sanders, whomever it is, as individuals, we have a job to do. Are we going to join the hate? Or are we going to provide the antidote to hate with our own version of love or maybe gratitude? What do you think? I just said earlier today that I feel like there's three things I've been trying to do, which is to remain strong. It's been a very, very hard year for people. Oh, my gosh. Catering business, forget it. To remain positive, very difficult with all of the onslaught of bad news, and to remain kind. And to do those three things, like I, I'm like, usually if I'm trying to be kind and positive, then I, I can't really... I don't feel strong. If I'm trying to be strong, I don't feel kind. You know, it's very hard to do all three these days, but I think that's the whole trick. So I have my natural inclination is to feel horrified and have all kinds of hate, hate feelings about the terrible things I'm seeing on the news and the terrible things people are doing to other people. But it's not going to change the tide. So if I just add more hate to this huge pile of hate, it's not going to do anything. It doesn't mean that I want to sit passively by and, oh, I love you. Please go and take away my rights. And I love you. No. Yes. You know, I have to fight, I have to stand up and resist. But there's a way to do that without adding to the pile of hate. And You're it, absolutely right. There is. And, you know, there is a big winner so far in the election. Do you want to know who it is? I know it's coming. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Legal weed right one big in the election yes nice. la, 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 la. there's that something is. that cuts across all parties <laughs> that's right weed wins big now that headline should, that should be the cake celeste makes for you i'm working oh on my it. god no please can, work you, on it. You can, can you see how i am can you guys see how i am just totally look what watch what is that tea concoction right mushroom no, it's not. It's 
Uh, don't even ask me what's in there. All right. What is your vision for yourself and for your group and your people and your organization? What is your vision now in moving forward? Because we've got a couple of minutes left, and I'd love for you to share that. And thank you. Thank you both for joining me here today. Thank, thank you. you. Well, for me, I mean, I, I, I compartmentalize. So I have Rossi the caterer, and my vision as a caterer is to just find a way to keep catering the parties we're famous for as best we can in a corona safe atmosphere. And so what that means right now is lots of mini bar mitzvahs and mini weddings and mini, mini, mini. I'm going a little bit mini mental, but you know, it keeps the staff working, it keeps me cooking. And you know, I just try mostly to keep a sense of humor. You know, if, if you can keep laughing at the ridiculousness of it, like right now we're killing ourselves for a bar mitzvah for 40 people, the same day we should have been cooking for 400. You, you have to laugh or you're gonna cry. So I get it. But I have been trying to use all of the time that I got from having so many events cancel by starting my podcast, by writing, writing plays, working on my second book. And I know that when we get busy again, then I'll be like, why did I waste that time? What's wrong with me? Now, Mademoiselle Celeste over here is a really big time voiceover artist. I mean, she's a phenomenal actor, but she's an unbelievable voiceover artist. And so she had that down so much so that she has a voiceover studio in her apartment. So she's got wow. a horrible apartment. You know, it's, it's Manhattan, so it's not giant. It's just perfect. Studio. It's a studio, but it's gorgeous. But she's got her own studio there. And so now she's been teaching herself how to also be an engineer. That's what she's been doing during Corona. She's like, what did you do during Corona? Well, I taught myself how to be an audio book, an audio engineer. I mean, that's like, I'll, you know, I'll good. Be I, I guess that means we I'll have an opening. <laughs> I'm coming to Seattle. I'll bring the cake. I spent, <laughs> I spent my whole life coming out of the closet, but she goes in that closet. <laughs> She's done all kinds of books. Tell, tell her about oh, some stop. of your stuff. Stop. Like, what? Uh, I, yeah, I've gotten to do about 100 audiobooks. And I've, done, books. I've done 100 books. I've done two this year, but I, I, have a, I have a feeling that you know every actor, there are actors even more famous than I, and they're out of work, and I think they're doing audiobooks now. So I have, I've only done two this year. Yeah, but, but they don't so have great. their own audio studio in My their whisper apartment. room. No, but you know, this is good because we have a bunch of folks that host with us and they all looking for audiobook talent. They really are. So now email me your information. Thank you so much. Yeah. Look, I want to thank you both. And we're going to we're going to be doing more chats before the new year is here. But there is a humorous side to this. And yet there's also a powerful side to this within each of us. And as much sadness as one might feel for the hate, there's also motivation for us to do what we need to do to really transform. And I think that's what you're both doing. And I think you do it. And my gosh, you're doing it with food. Like who doesn't love that? <laughs> but blackout cake, I got you on record on this show that went live. Okay, we'll figure it out. Yes. And I'm not kidding. Yes. If you put it in a plexiglass cake, and it gets messed up, I will eat it. Just send a spoon, too. I will, too. <laughs> Thank you both for joining me. Chef, give out your website, would you? It is theragingskillet.com, and you can always catch up with me there. And my podcast is Chef Rossi. It's called Raging and Eating on Anchor. My first book is The Raging Skillet, and I've written my second book, Queen of the Jews. I'm shopping around for a publisher right now. Good. And there you have it. And how do we get a hold of you, Celeste, for the voiceover work? Uh, my website is Celeste Chula. It's C E L E S T E C I U L L A dot com. I love it. Thank you both. TJ, thank you. And I want to thank all of you. Charlene, boy, I'm going to catch up with you one on one. Thank you for trying. Everybody remember the words thank you. Even if you say them to yourself, they're more powerful than you can imagine. We'll see you next time.